flying into space is an incredible experience, but the vehicles that got us there used to be anything but comfortable. But that all changed with Crew Dragon. Not only was it more cost-effective, but its interior redefined space travel, creating an experience so comfortable that astronauts would never want to fly anything else. What makes this vehicle so special? Join us in today's episode as we take you inside the SpaceX Crew Dragon and show you exactly what sets it apart. Now, before stepping inside, let's take a good look at the stunning Dragon capsule. The Crew Dragon has two main parts, the capsule and the trunk. The capsule features a mechanical hatch at the tip of its nose cone, which can either reveal a docking port or a cupola window, depending on the mission. The capsule's exterior is painted white. This is not just an aesthetic choice, but also helps protect the spacecraft. It's called Z93C55, a white coating that was applied to the spacecraft to protect it from the rigors of space. The Dragon spacecraft is outfitted with two distinct types of engines, each designed for specific functions. The Draco thrusters, arranged in small clusters around the capsule, are responsible for precise orbital adjustments. With 16 Draco thrusters in total, each utilizing hypergolic propellant, two chemicals that ignite spontaneously upon contact, they provide fine control for maneuvering in space. In contrast, the Super Draco engines, concealed within the capsule's prominent ridges, deliver far more power. These high thrust engines, 200 times stronger than the Draco thrusters, are reserved for critical emergency abort scenarios, allowing the capsule to swiftly escape from a malfunctioning rocket booster and ensuring astronaut safety. The trunk, standing 12 feet tall, acts as an essential adapter between the capsule and the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. It houses solar panels for power generation, a heat dissipation radiator to manage temperature, and fins that ensure aerodynamic stability during emergency aborts. Overall, the design of Crew Dragon is sleek and modern, exactly what you think a 21st century spacecraft to look like. The question now is, is the inside also that stunning? I will give you a little hint, it is. In fact, the interior of the Dragon is the thing that stands out the most about the spacecraft. When compared to Russia's Soyuz, the difference in experience is like flying economy versus business class except in this case, the business class option is much cheaper. So, what exactly are the differences? When you first walk inside the spacecraft, you will immediately notice how spacious it is. At 16 feet tall and 13 feet wide, the capsule offers a generous 9.3 cubic meters of pressurized, habitable space. The spacecraft comfortably supports a crew of four, but according to SpaceX, it can accommodate up to seven crew members. Beneath the seats, there are three cargo slots where astronauts can stow their equipment or even some snacks for the ride. The second thing you will notice right away is that there is not much going on inside the Dragon spacecraft. Let's look at the Soyuz again. The control area is mostly dominated by a panel filled with buttons and a joystick. Given the tight quarters, the commander, seated in the middle, even has to use a special pointing stick just to reach the Soyuz's screen. Even when it comes to a recently built spacecraft, Boeing's Starliner is still largely manual, with buttons and levers. In contrast, the control panel of SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft has three large touch screens, and that's it. Each screen in Crew Dragon can display up to 10 sets of data, allowing the crew to focus on specific systems as needed. There's an overall systems page, with the ability to drill down into individual pages at least 25 to 30 in total. These displays provide real-time updates on the spacecraft's status, from Dragon's position in space and potential destinations, to the onboard environment and various system capabilities. To use this control panel, astronauts will be trained at a ground facility before the flight. However, most of the time, they won't need to use those things that they train for. The capsule is an autonomous vehicle designed to assist astronauts handling most tasks on its own, so the crew has very little to do during the mission. Even if something goes wrong with the spacecraft's automated control systems, 
it's not yet up to the astronauts on board to step in. SpaceX ground controllers will handle troubleshooting and send commands directly from mission control. If all of those fail, only then will the astronauts step in and manually control the vehicle. Give passengers a true sightseeing experience. Crew Dragon is fitted with four windows, allowing them to take in breathtaking views of Earth, the Moon, and the broader solar system from the comfort of their seats. If you're fortunate enough to be on a mission like Polaris Dawn, which doesn't involve traveling to the International Space Station, the IDSS port can be swapped for a 1.2-meter domed plexiglass window, providing stunning panoramic views similar to the ISS cupola. From there, you can lean out and enjoy 360-degree vistas of space and Earth. Space may be harsh and cold, but aboard Crew Dragon, it feels just like home. Thanks to its advanced environmental control and life support system, the spacecraft maintains a comfortable and safe atmosphere for astronauts. During their journey, crew members can adjust the interior temperature to a range of 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, ensuring a pleasant environment throughout the mission. With all the amenities I have mentioned so far, surely everyone is wondering what a trip on this ship would be like. Well, let me walk you through the details of a typical Crew Dragon mission. Before the mission begins, you and your crewmate will be given a custom-tailored pressure suit and a fancy 3D printed helmet. This is the advanced SpaceX EVA suit, the same thing that was given to Isaac Mann when he performed a spacewalk in the Polaris Dawn mission. The suit ensures astronauts' safety by delivering breathable air, maintaining a stable temperature, and providing the critical atmospheric pressure needed to protect them from harmful physical effects in the harsh conditions of space. The SpaceX EVA suit is crafted from multiple layers of materials inspired by the Falcon rocket interstage and Dragon spacecraft trunk. These specially engineered materials provide passive thermal regulation and ensure the suit maintains its structural integrity. SpaceX's principal spacesuit engineer, Eric Krauss, said that the suit is like a suit of armor made of fabric. The helmet features a 3D printed visor crafted from polycarbonate coated with copper and indium tin oxide. This design helps reflect sunlight away from the crew, while also bouncing infrared heat back toward them when in deep space. Additionally, the helmet integrates a heads-up display directly into the visor, providing real-time data about the spacesuit systems. This tech is one of my favorite features. It truly gives you an Iron Man-like experience. Anyway, on launch day, you will ride to the pad on the Tesla Model X SUV. After the ground crew helps you get inside the Dragon capsule, they will secure you into the seat by connecting the boots clipped on your suit to the floor. Your highest grade carbon fiber and Alcantara cloth seat has a life support line that will be plucked in the port on the thigh of your EVA suit to supply cool nitrogen and oxygen to maintain optimal conditions. During the Falcon 9 booster preparation and testing process, if any problem occurs, the eight Super Draco engines will immediately launch Dragon vertically away from the Falcon 9. If not, then it is time to launch. The Falcon 9's nine Merlin engines ignite with a deafening roar, unleashing 1.8 million pounds of thrust. The rocket accelerates swiftly, shattering the sound barrier in under a minute and reaching supersonic speeds. If you've ridden on other spacecraft, you'll notice a difference. Launching on Crew Dragon is noticeably smoother. If you don't have that experience, let's hear from someone who has. Bob Benkin, one of the first passengers of Crew Dragon, shared his experience. Quote, We were surprised a little bit at how smooth things were off the pad. The space shuttle was a pretty rough ride heading into orbit with the solid rocket boosters. And our expectation was, as we continued with the flight into the second stage, that things would basically get a lot smoother than the space shuttle did. But Dragon was huffing and puffing all the way into orbit. And we were definitely driving or riding a Dragon all the way up. Once the first stage separates, the rocket's upper stage takes control, and Dragon continues its journey upwards, reaching orbital velocity in approximately nine minutes. About 15 minutes after takeoff, you can take off our helmets and enjoy the zero-gravity environment. 
you are pretty much safe in this phase, so you can float around watching the earth from the four windows. If you feel like using the toilet, there's one located at the ceiling of the spacecraft. It will not be a pleasant experience, but considering that in the past we were given only a sack to use for toilet purposes, this is as good as we can get. Besides, I don't think you would need to use it anyway. The ISS missions are usually a day long, and traveling in space is somewhat like going on a camping trip, especially in the first 24 hours when your body adjusts. During this time, your digestive system tends to slow down. So, don't expect there to be much, if any, pooping aboard Dragon. Exploring space surely is fun, but just as exciting as the next step. Returning to Earth. There are seven potential landing sites, and the SpaceX team at Mission Control will select the optimal one based on weather and safety factors. As the capsule re-enters the atmosphere, the crew prepares for the dangerous phase of the flight. Re-entry. The Draco thrusters will fire to orient the capsule correctly and ensure a safe descent. During re-entry, the capsule will reach speeds of up to 28,000 kilometers per hour, creating intense heat from air compression. Dragon's Pika-3 heat shield will absorb and dissipate the heat, keeping you and everything else inside well protected. The atmospheric resistance will slow the Dragon's descent to just 560 kilometers per hour, exerting a force on the crew that's four to five times stronger than Earth's gravity. Once the fire from re-entry dissipates, the communication system will come back online, and the ground crew will notify the crew to prepare for parachute deployment. First, two drogues will deploy to help slow us down, followed by four main parachutes bringing our speed down to a safe 24 kilometers per hour before we splash down. Once you splash down in the water, a SpaceX crew aboard a recovery ship will be waiting for you. They'll hook the capsule up to a crane and lift it onto the deck. After sliding out of the capsule with the assistance of the ground crew, you won't be able to walk immediately due to the sudden shift in gravity. Although it will take some getting used to and practice, you will eventually be able to walk and function normally again and have a great story to tell your friends. As for the Dragon capsule, it will be taken back for refurbishment and ready to fly again. And there you have it, the reason why Crew Dragon has been the most reliable spacecraft we've had since the Space Shuttle program and the most dependable vehicle for transporting crew to and from the ISS to date. So what about you, if possible? Would you like to be a SpaceX Dragon crew member one day? Let me know in the comments.